functions. Uh, in this video, I'm finally going to take the time to, to go a bit deeper into what is this thing that's a function. Uh, we've seen functions, we've called functions, we've kind of defined functions. There's a setup function, the draw function. What is all this stuff? And what does it mean to define your own functions and call your own functions? And why might you want to do that? Now, functions as a whole in JavaScript is a huge topic. And they're kind of the fundamental foundational building block of JavaScript in many ways. So hopefully all of the, you know, uh, there's going to be lots more to discuss in future videos and topics as, as, as many different gaps are filled in in terms of what functions can do and how they're used in JavaScript. But here, right now, I just want to start with the very basics. And uh, calling a function, uh, defining, calling a function and defining a function. Um, now, now, this is not a new topic. You, I, all of us who have done anything in P5 and JavaScript before have been doing this a lot. So for example, this line of code here, ellipse, 100, 100, you know, 50, comma 50, this is calling a function, calling, executing a function, draw an ellipse in the window, in the canvas. This, when I say function setup, and then presumably put some code in here, this is defining a function. I'm defining a function named setup, and this is the code that goes inside that function. Now, if you're looking at these two things, these are things that, that we've done in so many different examples, but there's a strange little fact here. We've called the, I've called, in the examples, I've called the ellipse function many, many times, but I never personally defined the ellipse function. The setup function, we have the inverse thing that's going on here. I've defined the setup function many, many times in many examples, but I've never actually called the setup function. This is because both of these functions here are special functions special to P5. One of the things we say, I said that P5 is, P5 is a library. It's a library of functions. Ellipse, rect, line, fill, stroke, background. So the definition for the ellipse function doesn't live within us, although maybe it, in some ways it lives within us, but it lives in, within P5. It's part of the P5 library. You and I, we don't have to define it. It's defined in P5. The setup function is also a special P5 function. It's up to the user, the programmer, me, it's up to you to define it, but P5 knows when to execute it. It executes it automatically when the page loads. So both of these are a little bit strange. That, you know, that it's, hopefully it was intuitive to you to use these, but it's a little bit of a strange thing going on. Define setup, P5 executes it at the beginning of the program. Call functions like ellipse, those live with inside the P5 library. So what does it mean to both define and call your own function? And so there are two reasons why you might want to do this, and I'm sure there's many more, but two fundamental reasons, sort of key principles of uh, functions. Uh, one is modularity, right down here, and the other, if I can dare spell this right, is reusability. So functions are a way that you can organize your program. You've got like hundreds of lines of code and draw. Some of it's doing this, some of it's doing that, some of it's doing that. You want to break that up into modular pieces. You can put those into separate functions and, and it helps keep your code rather well organized. <laughs> Reusability. Uh, I'm sure you've encountered this scenario. You draw this very elaborate pattern. It has lots of different shapes in it. You've figured out how to draw it and then you want to draw it again in the window. Well, if you had a function, that takes care of all of that stuff, you could then call that function twice, reuse that function, giving it different parameters. So these are the pieces that I need to, that I would like to look at in these videos. And you know what, I think what I'm gonna do in this video is just start with the modularity piece. So I'm gonna look at an example and make that example modular, and then in the next video, I'll look more specifically at the reusability piece because this is where uh, this question of arguments and parameters will come up. So let me see if I can just get uh, through this idea of defining a function, calling it, and making a program modular, and then uh, move into the next video. Uh, we'll look into this sort of reusability question. And then there would be some other things. There's another, so I have a list over here. There's a couple other things that I want to do. So there'll probably be three or four of these. Okay, so let's come over here for a second. I have a simple sketch. Uh, if I can see it here, I'm going to run it. It's just a bouncing ball sketch. It's a variation on some one of the sketches that I made earlier in a video about conditionals. A couple things that I'll point out are different. One is I turned the variables into an object. <laughs> so 
a lot of the examples might just say var x, var y, var speed. Here I'm, I'm doing this for a reason because later there's another aspect that I'm going to fill in here. But remember, in JavaScript, you can make a variable that's essentially a container for other variables. These are actually referred to as key value or name value pairs. The name is y speed, the value is negative 3. The name is x speed, the value is 4. So ball has all of these variables. And you can see down here, if I want to draw an ellipse at ball x or ball y, then I just use the dot syntax, ball.x, ball.y. So that's what I have here. I have a bouncing ball sketch. Hooray. Now, if I look inside draw here, you can see there are a few different kind of sections of code. I'm going to act, even add a line break here. You could say, like, OK, well, this is all the code that draws the circle, the ellipse on the screen. This is the code that handles what happens if it hits any of the edges. It inverts the speed. And this is the code that uh, moves it. It changes its x by its x speed. It changes its y by its y speed. So there's really three things. There's draw, there's display, there's bounce, and there's move. So what I would like to do is turn this program into a modular program that has three parts, a drawing part, a bouncing part and a dis, uh, moving part. Okay, so we need to write three functions. Now I need to <laughs> I lost my pen. I need to come back over here, and I want to just quickly review or actually lay out for the first time what the syntax for defining a function is. And actually, we have that syntax already. This is the syntax. All we need to do is declare the keyword function. I am going to declare, I'm going to define a function, that's what that says. Then the function needs a name. Here the name was set up, but I might make the name like move or display or bounce, depending on the functions I intend to write. Then you need parentheses. Now right now you notice the setup function, the draw function, just has an open and close parentheses. And that's what, for this particular example that I'm making, we don't need to put anything in between the parentheses. That's where we have to set up arguments and parameters. Uh, parameters, sorry, the, the word I actually I'm looking for is parameters here for the function. And then some code is going to go inside the function, and that code is in between an open and curly bracket. So the parentheses stuff I'll get to more in the next video. So this is that syntax. So now I could come over here <laughs> and I can scroll down. Let me scroll, let me move this over a little bit so I think you can see it. And I can scroll down and where, so first, where do I want to define the function? Now, <laughs> this is a very tricky question. Yes, you can define functions kind of all over the place in all sorts of crazy ways in JavaScript. But right now, I'm going to do something kind of simple and just say, below draw, you know, kind of like where I might have put mouse pressed or key pressed or other functions, I'm going to make up some of my own functions. I'm going to say, uh, make a function called move. And I'm going to make a function called bounce. And I'm going to make a function called display. So now you can see I defined three, ooh boy, what are all these extra curly brackets? I don't know where those came from. But you can see I have now defined three functions. Function move, function bounce, function display. These are not, even though the words sound very like, oh, those must be important, move, bounce, those are, those are not words that are part of the P5 library. They are new words that I am making up only for the purpose of this sketch, right? I could have called it flippity flu or whatever, it doesn't really matter. That, I mean, it matters because you want to pick function names that make sense and you don't want to pick function names that are already used for something else. But for the most part, uh, you can pick whatever names that you want, just like picking a variable name. Same rules apply. So if we look, this is the code for moving the ellipse around the screen, changing its x by its speed. So I'm actually just cut this and paste it in here. This is the code for the bounce. And I'm going to put that in there. And this was all the code. And I'm going to leave background and draw. Because I conceptually, I feel like drawing the background is not really associated, is not part of drawing that bouncing ball itself. It's separate. So what I really just want to do is, is keep the code that's for displaying the ball itself. So we can see now, draw has like nothing in it anymore. There's just a move function, a bounce function, and if I scroll down, a display function. And now let me stop and run this sketch again. Nothing in the window. Why canvas, that is. Nothing in the canvas. Why is there nothing in the canvas? All the functions are there. So all we did was define the functions, right? 
All we did was define the functions. The flow of the program, setup runs once, draw runs over and over again. The only thing that's happening is background. Now, setup and draw, we I never had to call those functions because they're special P5 functions that P5 executes in order to control the flow of the program. Set up once, draw over and over again. But any other functions that I define, I've got to tell the program when to make those things happen. So I could put them all in setup, but I don't want to move the ball in setup. I don't want to display the ball in setup. What I want is to have those things happen every time through draw. So I want to move, whoops, bounce, and display. Now this, by the way, is the syntax for calling a function. And notice it's no different than the syntax for calling background. Background, we're executing it. You can see it's colored red because it's part of the P5 library. Move, bounce, and display are functions that aren't part of the P5 library, but I've defined them below. So uh, now, uh, this should be exactly the same program we had before. I do want to note, however, that background right, requires an argument, a color, and move, bounce, and display don't require any arguments. And this is an essential topic that I would like to look at uh, in the next video. Uh, OK, so let's run this and see if this works. Hey, it's the same exact program that we had before. The only difference now is that it's modular. There's a move part, a bounce part, and a display part. And this is useful for, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, uh, you know, if I just want to like, sort of test how things are working, I could comment out this move function and run it, and you can see the ball is no longer moving. So if I have these functions, uh, if I have the code kind of organized into these pieces, I can kind of control which pieces I turn on and turn off. I can also say things to myself like, oh, I just want to change the way the ball looks. Oh, I, oh, I know where I need to look. And, and in a small program, this seems sort of silly. But in a much larger piece of software, it might be hard to find like, the right part of the code. But if you have that part of the code in a function, I could say, ah, you know, I wanted it to have you know, some color, uh, uh, some fill. So I can change. Only I know I, all I need to do is change the display function. And now I added a fill to that circle. OK, so this is the uh, essential basics of defining a function and calling a function, and looking at how you can uh, take parts of a program and put them in separate functions to make a program modular. And the next video, what I want to do is, uh, whoops, is I, I want to look at um, what happens if you want to call a function multiple times. If you want to take an idea, package it up into a function, and reuse that idea in different ways with different parameters. And that's kind of a key piece as well. OK, uh, there we go.